Hey guys, it's yours truly, Music Clues here, here, and I'm back with another Gamers Den. Den. So, uh, for those who don't know, the Gamers Den series is basically where I interview gamers from around the uh, interwebs, webs, talking about their passion, the history with gaming, and some of the things they love to do, do to spread the joy and love of gaming. And I'm here today with someone very special. Special, someone who is not only part of one of the Sega community's biggest uh, projects, but also one of the bi biggest music uh, music stations out there. Well, in my opinion. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, hello there. It is myself. It is Green Viper Eight. I am the nowadays head administrator of Radio Sega site, playing the best Sega music 24/7, as well as uh, some live streams here and there, some videos. Um, Trying to branch out a little bit on that one, but mostly focusing on uh, playing you great music and delivering you great talk shows, that type of deal. So if you've never heard of us, hopefully uh, this is a great first time uh, hearing of us, but thank you for having me on. Oh, anytime, dude. Anytime. Time. Uh, so um, before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about yourself. So um, do, you, do you have any hobbies outside of gaming that you like to talk about? Um, it sounds very sad, but not really, to be honest. Um, I, d I don't know, ga gaming's such a central core part of my life, everything just seems to kind of seep back into it somehow, like, uh, you know, my my interactions uh, in my in my day-to-day -day life and uh, with friends, etc., always seem to come down back to that, that's how I've met a lot of people, that uh, sort of thing. Uh, outside of that, I guess uh, the general sphere, normally... Working, coming home, playing some games, talking to some friends, running <laughs> RS, and it's time for time for sleep again, pretty much. Which sounds sad, but you know, got to branch out one day when there's a bit less on my plate. <laughs> hey, sounds like my routine. Nice uh, working, working radio second part, of course. <laughs> um, so uh, let's talk a bit about your gaming history. So, what was your first ever video game? So. Um, I thought my first ever video game originally was very unconventional, but then I think I learned uh, a lot of people from my kind of background have the same experience. So it's uh, it's Sonic One, um, but it's the eight bit version, so the one that you would have played on either. I think more people would have probably played it on Game Gear, but it was also on Master System over here. And apparently, this is a very common thing for British people. I learned a lot of people started with that as their first game or their first Sega game, that type of deal. But yeah, very first game I remember playing and. Uh, Still one of my favorites to this day, but not necessarily my favorite, but you know, the memories attached to it help <laughs> elevate its status a bit, <laughs> uh, in my opinion at least. Huh, how ironic, you're the opposite of my best of friend Ethan N, who is also a GoGamer on our channel, and he actually has played the 16-bit version of Sonic 1, so it's kind of ironic that you played two different versions of Sonic 1 as your first video game. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange indeed. Uh, so what is your favorite system? Oh, oh, um, it's uh, actually uh, to go against what I just said. It is also a bit of an unconventional one in that regard as well. I'm a really big fan of, of all things the Nintendo Wii. I just thought it had a great selection of games that never got ported to anything else. When it was used well, the motion control did benefit the games and led to some weird experimental stuff, which uh, is always my favourite type of like genre of game. Just Ones that, ones that are a bit against the normal gradient, um, and we had a lot of those uh, from companies like Sega, uh, Nintendo themselves, of course. Um, I'm trying to think of some other examples off the top of my head, and uh, failing miserably, companies like Capcom as well really did some good stuff to push the Wii. But a lot of a lot of people like under underestimate it on purpose, I guess you could say. Like, oh, it was bad because of this, and bad because of that, but just nice and it, it's like reminiscent of my take on gaming in general but I kind of like to put the positive spin on things um, so it's just one of my favourite systems because I was able to kind of take take what others would see as a negative and uh, make something positive out of it at least but yeah that's would my favourite probably outside of that um, do do love a good bit of um, Sega Saturn and uh, if I had to pick from outside of those two if I had to pick either a Sony or Microsoft console I guess I'd go with the Xbox 360 as well, just because it's got a great range of games on it. Hey, hey, those are some pretty good system choices. I personally myself own a 360, uh, and uh, I'm also a big, 
so uh, I'm also actually, no offense, not really a big fan of the Wii, Wii, but I do give it credit for bringing some pretty good titles, such as Super Mario Galaxy, which we're going to be able to play in like two weeks' time, uh, again on the Switch, so... Yeah. Better controls too. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <forget that. laughs> yep, definitely. Uh, okay, now here's probably a tough one. What are your top three or five? You can choose which one. Favorite games of all time. Uh, normally this would be very tough, but actually I was asked the same question by someone recently, so I actually have some solid answers at least. I'll go with top five just uh, to avoid having to sort them all. Um, so, if I had to pick top five outside of my usual sphere, I'd probably, in no particular order, go for Sonic Adventure, uh, the Dreamcast version, also Nights into Dreams, also quite like uh, Super Mario Galaxy, as you mentioned, quite like Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and I'm also a pretty big fan of Shinsukura Wars, which just came out this year, uh, <laughs> during the middle of everything that's been happening, obviously, it was a nice nice right of sunshine that I didn't kind of expect to enjoy as much as I did and I think that's why it ranked very highly on my list oh but yeah I, it's a, a very conventional or very conventional for my tastes um, pick of games I guess you could say because they're all very reflective of the consoles that I like and uh, the systems I like and some of them around around the time I was really most into gaming so it's nothing too hugely surprising in there I'd like to think but yeah, very, very standard takes for my own tastes. Wow, that that's actually a pretty good pa out there. Yeah, I wasn't. I'm not surprised about Sonic Adventure. Uh, lots of people I've talked to, Sonic fans or not Sonic fans, have mentioned that one. Um, Super Mario Galaxy, of course, we just talked about. Soccer Wars wasn't one I was not expecting though. Uh, <laughs> uh, any particular reason that one? Um, yeah, I think it. I, I just think it's a. Uh really great game and told a story which I kind of hadn't really heard before which is what I always enjoy in a game not just or mostly good gameplay but also when it can kind of tell you a story that's like a bit a bit out there a bit different you know got to suspend your disbelief that type of thing um, and gameplay was pretty fun as well and just really grew attached to the characters and the uh, story but that was really the main main reasoning behind it being so highly up there oh okay okay Okay, before we move on, I gotta ask, what's your favorite Soccer Wars girl? Mmm? Mmm, well, um, <laughs> I'm a bit more of a fan of the modern series for a start, but if you had to pick, the one I went with in-game was uh, the blandest choice possible, I went with Sakura, so... <laughs> well, that's, yeah, not, that's not shocking. I mean, a lot of people would choose her. Personally, I would. Yeah, exactly. The cover art character, so you got, you got to go the the main the main plot relevant character. That was my logic behind uh, the decision. All right. So now let's talk about your experience with Radio Sega. So you mentioned that you are head administrator. So um, I assume that means you watch over the station to make sure everything's okay. Yeah. So I'll give a rough rundown of roughly what my um, well, I'd say day, but you know what. <laughs> duties I would kind of get up to so a lot of it is rallying other people together because uh, there's only so much I can do myself so making sure everyone's ready so for example if they've got a show ready uh, to come up are they ready for the show in the example of uh, live streams which are branching out to you ready for the stream have you got everything you need that sort of thing so a lot of it's rallying people but there is also some stuff I do for myself like I'm very uh, involved with the media team for example which we have which uh, just like categorize our podcast and get them all ready i'm heavily involved in the editing side of that and uh trying to um get people all together on that side of things uh, outside of that uh, curate music working with the playlist team uh, which is a very small team at the moment but hoping to expand it sometime soon but you know getting new soundtracks to the site that sort of thing uh making sure my main duty which i kind of forget about um which i shouldn't have really forgotten about this year is um, mostly event planning. Um, that's really the main focus that I take on. So getting, like for example, our, our big main event, uh, Winterfest, ready every December. And we've had a couple during the uh, during the earlier months uh, because of 2020. So we had a 10 year anniversary celebration one. We had a uh, we had an opposites week one, and they all require months of planning in advance. So while juggling, making sure everyone else is ready. I'm also sat there planning 
run these events which people take part in and listen to months in advance, but that's really the, the gist of what I do. So getting involved with some teams and also um, also just <laughs> sort of getting everyone into their into their right places, ready to go, making sure that things are okay uh, before or we go live or go to the public, that type of deal. Oh, okay, okay. That sounds good. Yeah, if anybody has uh, w- listened to the Winterfest shows yet, yeah, go back and listen to them. They are amazing. Winterfest is such a great time. Time. I'm sorry I haven't been able to make, make some of the other events, though. Oh, that opposite week one sounded like a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, thank, you for, thank you for the high praise. Um, opposite week was very fun. It was one of those things which I love, which it was just a complete thin air idea. Someone suggested it on a whim, and we thought we would do it as this small scale thing for a joke and it all, it all snowballed out of hand very quickly but it was still all still in our control so what well, yeah we ended up with a full full week long event on kind of the scale of Winterfest which we didn't really expect when planning it but that was the beauty of it really it manifested into something much more than any of us had ever expected as a dumb silly idea <laughs> we might it reminds me of another dumb, silly idea that one of uh, Final Fantasy House's voice actors actually had. Had uh, She was thinking that we could stream Smash for a charity, and um, people actually liked that idea. <laughs> and if they won, they get to ask her a question, and it basically still sm- snowballed into her streaming. It, they got out of control pretty a little bit, but it maybe pretty much in control. She even started Discord, so yeah, that kind of remind your story kind of reminded me of my own story that an experience that I've had. So sounds awesome. Sometimes um, you can have beautiful, beautiful accidents out of some of these things that you just didn't anticipate happening. And uh, actually, the I, I guess you think it could have catastrophic effects, but actually it turns out all right in the end. So it goes from good to oh my goodness, this is about that out of control. To oh, actually, the end result was very nice and that's exactly what it sounded like for you there so glad to hear it all worked out <laughs> yes it did uh all right so how did you find radio sega sega i'm very curious so um i guess the way i re- really found it and actually started tuning in was um through another radio station um people will kill me for this and they always do kill me for it but um i found radio sega through Sega Sonic Radio, which is a now defunct um, radio station owned by the Sonic Stadium, and those group of guys over there, and they roughly did the same thing Radio Sega did, except a different batch of shows, and uh, it was mostly more focused on Sonic music. But generally, back in the day, it was a, a very simple affair. But it was just nice to tune in and listen to music every now and then. But I found found out about Radio Sega through them. And initially, I wasn't a huge Sega fan. Back in the day, I was just huge, huge, huge into Sonic, and that was really the only thing I ever sort of played, talked about, listened to, that that sort of thing. Yeah, thankfully, we're past those days. But um, So I found it through them, and I thought it was a little bit boring because it focused on the games, which I wasn't particularly interested in. But Sega Sonic Radio then died um, slowly. It, a really long, painful death over the course of years, and shows just stopped airing on it, and people stopped doing the like music stream when nothing was on so it did force me over to Radio Sega where I then discovered a bunch of new games, a bunch of new music, chatted to a bunch of people such as yourself and it once again it was one of those like beautiful accidents in that I never anticipated joining the site and when I did I thought oh this isn't going to be very good and I'm not going to enjoy this and uh, I'm currently sat here talking to someone I met through the station about how I run the station so um yeah, stranger things have happened, really, but at the same time, it is very weird how it all how it all occurred. But was, yeah, how I ended up finding it was a, a little bit uh, a little bit strange, and people normally don't like me for telling that story, especially on the staff side. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, let's hope they don't find this video then. <laughs> Kidding. I um, hope they would, but <laughs> maybe just skip those two minutes there. Was yeah. Uh, but... Time coded. Mm-hmm. Uh, but honest, honestly, that uh, that's not too far from how I found on the station, uh, personally. I was just uh, basically surfing Twitter uh, and came across Sega Sonic's Twitter account. 
or at least something from the of a Twitter account. And then uh, in the suggestions, it said Video Sega. So I clicked on it, followed them, and then I followed briefly for a while until about two years later, I finally had the courage to muster up and join uh, IRC. Uh, and then, yeah, it pretty much came from there. Yeah. Uh, I go in more in detail what ha happened with my time there, but I, for my sake of memory, <laughs> that would be a long story that we have time for. So, uh, I just, uh, I'll just leave it at that. I've just been really deep into Radio Sega. I've met so many friends like you, Green Viper. So, uh, I want to thank Radio Sega personally for giving me so much experience and brightening my horizon as a Sega fan. So, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, it's a complete pleasure, and it's uh, always nice to uh, hear experiences like that, especially um, since it's so similar to a lot of our own, in that, oh, we, we all met so many people through this thing, and we all discovered so many new songs that we love, and all these new games we love, and it's nice to see when people echo the same story, and it doesn't just feel like you versus the world, um, at least in my regards, because, you know, there's so many people who don't share these same stories, and like, kind of don't understand where you're coming from, so it's always nice to meet with like-minded people who are... Uh, I don't know, discovering the same things that you are around the same time. That's mm. how I felt about it back in the day. Hey, that's cool. Alright, do you have any fond memory, memories with cessation? And is there any favorite shows that you like? Like, or show that you like? To, to both questions, there's just so many answers that I possibly could go with. But in terms of fond memories... Uh, one of my fondest will always be Winterfest 2014. I think that was late December 2014. It was a great time, and that was really when I first started. Like yourself, you mentioned, I finally had the courage to join the IRC and actively talk to people. You know, nowadays we use Discord, but back then it was IRC and you know, private messaging people and uh, joining the chat room and meeting some great people. So that one always comes to mind and listening to Weekend of Great Shows, and especially back then it was. Oh no! I gotta, I gotta stay up to listen to this, and I gotta stay up until the late hours of the night, which is not something I really experimented with before, um, before sort of Winterfest. So fond memories in that regard, and that normally where most of my fond memories come from that event. Because um, two years later, 2016, got to join Radio Sega. Uh, that was when I first joined as a staff member, even if it was only temporary at the time. So that was my first one presenting, and lots of fond memories of that, even if the show's not that good, but. Yeah, great, great memories around, oh my goodness, I'm finally involved in this thing, which I've been listening to for like three years now, and then 2018 was when I took over Operations, so I've got a whole host of memories from running it and organising it, like the late nights, trying to slot everyone in and trying to get everyone tested, and then staying up to like 5, 6am to listen to everything, making sure it was all going alright, but that, um, in terms of ones that don't really involve me, are. 10 years celebration I know I said I organised that but we're going to ignore that part because just had some great shows people returning for years we hadn't spoken to like Resident SD and uh, True Skies as well L lots of people who just bring back great memories and the old be coming back and get to speak to new faces and old faces and that's a lot tends to be what a lot of my memories um, and favourite moments come from is moments like that where you just get to um, rekindle with people or kindle for the very first time and uh, as I mentioned uh, during the last question just share your love of this thing with people when you perhaps haven't previously had that chance to and you're all in the same place loving the same thing and uh, that yeah all of those memories kind of tie back into that if I really had to think about it uh, you also asked about favourite shows uh, might, might step on some toes with this one I'm actually going to have a look at the website um, always loved Resident SD shows, always adored Sega Ages, and on top of that also adored Late and Live. Uh, in terms of other shows, really do enjoy uh, the Sega Lounge. I also, also if I had to pick more favourites, I'm sorry once again to everyone listening to this, because um, I'm going to going to annoy some people. Love the Cyber Razor Cut, love Last Call, and uh, also did end up loving, I can't his name now, that's really best. <laughs> um, there we go, Sunday Fun Day, and a uh, brief few times that renamed itself. Loved all those. Um, I could sit here and ramble about all the shows all day, and my favourite things about them, but I think I respect your time and not do that. So, <laughs> that's my answer. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Those are some very good shows. I've listened to a couple of those, too. Mainly through um, uh, Winterfest and all that. But, uh, yeah, those are some pretty good shows. Uh, personally, my personal fa favorite... <clears throat> One time I mentioned... Uh, is, uh, uh... Hold on. I'm trying to think. Sega Mixer Drive, there it is. Uh, one of my favorite, all-time favorite shows. I need to get back to listening to that. Uh, it's, uh, for those who don't know, a show all about Sega V-Mixes. Um, um, hosted by, uh, does Vexy still host a show? Yep, it's, it's still Vexy after all these years. She's still going absolutely mental. All right. My hat goes about off to her. Yep, my hat goes out to her too. She is an excellent being of energy. Energy, I lo lo love how she's so enthusiastic, I guess. Uh, she's, just, yeah. she's just a very, very good host. So uh, shout out to you, XE, especially. Um, let me see. I also enjoy the Sega Lounge. Uh, it's also one of my favorite shows because I get to uh, really listen to people who are involved in Sega's uh, community beauty and uh, just uh, pure their background story and how they do things and yeah, it's really really good uh, good to just hear the behind the scenes sort of look of things when it, in terms of uh, uh, Sega staff and fans and stuff so yeah, I really enjoyed Sega Lounge personally too uh, other than that um, I haven't really listened to t I can't even remember too many of the shows, I need to go back and look look again. Uh, but those two off the top of my head are two of my favorites, for sure. Yeah, I mean, every show we run is great, which is why questions like that are really tricky to answer for me. Because, uh, of course, there's always going to be missteps, and it really isn't that many missteps in like the ten years we've been doing shows, to be honest. But, you know, everyone, everyone we work with right now, of course, we adore 99.9% .9 of the people we've worked with in the past, including yourself. We've absolutely adored working with as well, um, and yeah, for the most part, it's super tricky to choose <laughs> which ones would be my favourite. If, if I had to pick, they're ones that normally people, aside from Sega Lounge, normally don't mention as their favourites. They're ones that hold good memories for me. You know, I always go back and listen to the podcast, that type of thing. But of course, still listen to everything we do live. I'll go back and catch it all. But they're always the ones that stuck out, got good memories associated with listening to those. Uh, when they first aired and on the podcast, that type of deal. But, yeah. yeah. All right. So, do you have any favorite remixes or tracks that you like to play on the station? And if, or uh, do you have a favorite Sega soundtrack of all time? I I, I couldn't do one soundtrack, but I uh, yeah, there's, there's so many so many tracks I could pick, and um, to save myself, I'm gonna. Enough. I'm going to ring a lot. What I'm going to do is pull up my uh, my request page and see what that looks like on the website right now. So yeah, we got stuff like um, Captain Falcon's theme from F Zero GX. Adore that one. A lot of Jet Set Radio stuff like um, Concept of Love and uh, Funky Dealer. Those ones I quite enjoy. Uh, aside from that, favorite remixes I, I really enjoy. Apparently, according to the website, um, MJ Garden from Rob KTA, which is a remix of Marvel Garden Sonic Three. It's apparently my top requested remix, uh, which I didn't know until now. Disco Nights from um, from Nights of Lucid Dreaming, apparently very highly up there as well. If I had to pick one favourite Sega soundtrack, though, if you maybe whittle it down to just that, probably Let's Tap, um, which is one of those weird Wii games I mentioned earlier, but it's just every, every track on it just hits perfectly. It's like a kind of cross between Sega's normal style and some techno as well, and... It's just amazing. Every track on it, I can sit back and listen to endlessly. Very, if if you enjoy sort of the Sonic soundtracks, very much inspired by them. But as I say, a bit more on the techno -y side and uh, melody driven, very much. So if that's your style of soundtrack, then I think it's I think it's one of the greats. But unfortunately, they don't really make it easily available. It's on CD in certain parts of the world, and the rest of the world sort of get it digitally but not really but yeah that'd be my pick for favorite soundtrack and hopefully that covers some favorite songs and remixes as well uh, i'd like to hope at least oh okay i'll have to look into the let's tap scheme because i'm a big music fan 
if the name didn't give it all, well, away already. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think you definitely enjoy it. Uh, I think I think it'd be up your up your alley, to be honest. At least some of the tracks, maybe not all of them, but I think they're all all very good in their own rights. Oh, well, I'll find some enjoyment enjoyment in it. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure any fan on the Go Gamers channel knows what my favorite remix and slash a track of all time is. That be Green Hill from Sonic One, of course. Of course. Uh, <laughs> Could be anything else. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> See, Green by the Mills even. Uh, but um, if I had to choose my favorite soundtrack of all time, ooh, that'd be tough. Um, I guess of course. <laughs> now I know how you feel. Um. If I had to choose one though, um, probably most recently Sonic Last World. That one was a pretty good soundtrack. Yeah, I love that one. I, I think that's criminally underrated in terms of Sonic soundtracks as well. We were having this conversation the other day. Like, it, it doesn't quite sound like the others, but I think that's what makes it great. And that's why I love uh, Tomoyo Otani as a composer. Every game is different from the last. It does a different different genre, a different style. And uh, I think that's one of his best, to be honest. And uh, we were having the conversation specifically about the main theme, and I find it interesting because that's one of my favourite themes in the entire series. And yet, it doesn't get any love because it, it's you know it's not Crash Forty, it's not got vocals which you can easily sing along to, but it's great, awesome variety of instruments and just nice and chillax gets you in the mood for the game. That's how I felt about that, and the soundtrack in general fits everything that's going on on screen perfectly, which is exactly how it should be, while actually being music on its own. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree with your thoughts entirely. Uh, well, okay. I think that's all I can really think of. So, do you have any shout-outs with anybody that's worked with you or that you've talked into in the Radio Sega Discord? Um, I don't have anyone specifically because I don't, I don't feel like I want to single people out and then, um, you know, feel, feel like I'm leaving other people out. So, I'll just say the entirety of the RS community that includes yourself and uh, potentially anyone listening to this just everyone there is so awesome so welcoming uh, all new people always welcome the server and uh, show them the ropes that sort of thing and it's been a great group of friends to spend years of my life with really so every single one of you and everyone every single one of you listening as well who've taken the time out of your day really want to thank you hats off to you really appreciate it and if you're this far in the video as well <laughs> thank you very much you put up with my rambling I appreciate it <laughs> Hey, 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 do you hear me and, hear me and the, the Go Gamers Lambo all the time, so that's not nothing new. <laughs> but for anybody who has not subscribed to us, thank you for sitting down and taking a listen to Green Viper. I really appreciate uh, you taking out uh, time out of your day to in an interview me, because I know how busy you guys are. Uh, I, I honestly almost fought against talking to you about it, but I'm glad I actually got to sit down and talk to you, because honestly, I... I feel like I don't know you that well out of all the Radio Sega, uh, Radio Sega crew. I mean, I know a lot of the crew, Casey, Jamie, uh, Vexy, a lot of the team, because they've expressed their interest through both the shows and the Discord chat, but I feel like I didn't know, know you that well, so I feel like this was not only an interview, but a way to really know how you feel about certain things and how you also run the station, and I've gained a whole bunch of respect for you. Thank you very much, and as always, it's lovely to talk to you as well. Um, and yeah, well, <laughs> I can't, I can't really think of any way to uh, to follow that up. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but... Oh no, 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 no! Don't worry about it. But I did I understand completely. So, um, if you guys have any, anything, to, uh, if you guys want to check out Radio Sega, uh, please do so. Uh, I'll leave a link to the channel, uh, to the website below, as well as um, to the listening page where you can listen to Radio Sega itself. Um, you can also follow them on YouTube, Twitch, uh, Twitter is where they're most active in terms of figuring out what's coming up next. Um, and yeah, uh, do you have any closing words do you want to say? No, I just want to say thank you very much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, and uh, thank you to everyone who's listened once again. Greatly appreciated. Any 
anytime, dude. Anytime. All right, guys. That's all for this episode of Game of Stan. If you want to check out the previous episode, I will leave a link in the description below so you guys can check out the previous episode where I interviewed uh, one of the fan, uh, a fan game developer about his progress with his fan game. It's a text-only interview, though, because he had no mic, but it was still a very good interview. You and I personally think that it is one of my best to date. Uh, so, uh, yeah. But that's all for now. I will see you guys on the next video. And now back to working on Sage videos. <laughs> uh, I will see you guys later. And this is Music Clues signing out. See you guys soon. Bye.